still got your hat on. That would be me, I guess. <laughs> uh, good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen, and what a beautiful afternoon it is. My name is Mark Wallace. I'm chair of the Board of Governors of St. Evex University, and it's my privilege to welcome you to this historic event on campus, something that happens every 18 or so years, <laughs> the, the installation ceremony for St. Evex's uh, 18th President. Uh, Father Andrew Gillies, the university chaplain, will offer the prayer of invocation. Please stand, which you already are, but I'm reading my notes. <laughs> Lord God, look upon us as we gather at this important time in the history of our university. We acknowledge our dependence on you for life, faithfulness, and the blessing of companions and mentors who equip us in our journey of learning. On this day in particular, we ask for the blessing of wisdom to guide, of foresight to plan, and of patience to persevere to be granted to our president, Kent McDonald. May his service to St. Francis Xavier University lead each one of us, staff, students, administration, and faculty, to a renewed dedication to whatsoever things are true, noble, good, and worthy of praise. May our unity as we learn, teach, and relate to one another mobilize us to contribute to the good of the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Chief Paul Prosper, a member of the Buck and Keck Mi'kmaq community, will offer a Mi'kmaq greeting. He and Dr. McDonald will then have a ceremonial exchange of gifts. Walalio Jelasi, thank you all and welcome. Welcome to Mi'kma'ki the land of the Mi'kmaq people. On behalf of Bakunga, my community, I am honored to be part of this ceremony, which is steeped in rich tradition. Through ceremony, we realize the significance of these occasions, for they imprint and help shape the landscape of things to come. The Mi'kmaq would often mark such occasions, such as these, with an exchange of gifts. For it is through sharing that our hearts begin to open and a relationship takes root. And so, it is in this spirit that I offer this small token, a star blanket. Star blankets are used in a ceremony called a feast, fast, or vision quest. They help protect people in their journey to seek clarity on their role and purpose in this cycle we call life. Some Mi'kmaq believe that we and our Earth Mother Sitkamu 
are entering a new cycle, a new flow of energy, one that is lighter, less, less dense, and of a higher vibration. With new energy come new possibilities and potentials. Through the years, the Mi'kmaq had to change and adapt with each successive cycle. This experience has fostered a spirituality in an environment that is dynamic and in constant flux. The only certainty is change, and there is often a need to strike a balance between change and tradition. Like a collective that produces a sweet honey from the nectar of our youth, your role is to be the keeper of the vision, to hold that vision of this university in its highest potential. May your balance resonate a harmonic and natural rhythm embedded in the very best of tradition and the constant flow and freshness that change presents. And so I would like to offer you this small token of appreciation. May it provide you with a source of protection and recognition of the mastery that flows through you and all of creation. Umsit Nogama, all my relations. Thank you, Chief Prosper, uh, for this. Um, St. Vex has been here for uh, many years, but the Mi'kmaq people, of course, were here uh, well before us. And uh, to receive this gift and recognize uh, the traditional lands that we are on means uh, much, not only to me, but our great university. Uh, in a small way, uh, what we'd like to do here today is to offer you a, a gift. It's a, a sapling. Uh, but it's meant to be symbolic that uh, we will rejoin here in the spring uh, when we can bring uh, Mi'kmaq students to celebrate with us and we'll be planting a, a beautiful birch tree uh, that uh, connects the roots of the soil to the sun and uh, recognize this relationship, the sacred relationship that we have together. Thank you. Uh, Chief Prosper, thank you very much for your thoughtful greeting. I will now call on the Chancellor of St. Francis Xavier University and the Bishop of the Diocese of Antigonish, Bishop Brian Dunn, to open this installation. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Kent McDonald. As we gather for this installation of Dr. Kent McDonald, as the 18th president of St. Francis Xavier University, I want, to, I want to offer a warm welcome to all who have gathered, to the students, faculty, staff, administration of this university. A special welcome to Chief Prosper, to Honorable Peter McKay, Honorable Randy DeLore, municipal and religious leaders, 
other university presidents, and to Dr. Kent's wife, Mary Ellen, and family, and all who have traveled for this special celebration today. This historic occasion is indeed a, a, a pivotal moment in our history. Not only do we celebrate the installation of a new president, but we also acknowledge the fact that the university has, new, has newly articulated its identity as captured in the new legislation that was passed in the legislature, Legislative Assembly of Nova Scotia in June of this year. That legislation describes the identity of St. Francis Xavier University in ways that were not previously done. The act includes four objects describing the purpose of the university as an academic institution committed to the academic formation of its students. I acknowledge the role of Dr. Riley and other former presidents who have played, have, that they have played in achieving these objects through wonderful leadership, zealous service, and a sense of hospitality. However, the fourth object in that legislation is a new statement and refers to respecting the Catholic heritage and character that have formed a vital part of the university's history. This expresses a part of the identity of this university. This will certainly challenge all of us to reconsider how we connect to this essential identity. The President, the Board of Governors, and the Senate must take res greater responsibility for the development of the Catholic identity that has been evolving since the beginning. Part of the identity, a ethos, and spirit of St. Francis Xavier University emanates from its very founding by the Bishop of the Diocese of Antigonish in 1853 and its ongoing relationship to the Diocese of Antigonish. With the new title accorded to the Bishop of Antigonish, that is, the Vicar of the Founder, the Bishop of the Diocese is committed to working closely with the President so that the unique identity of this university are, is clearly respected and developed. Many core human values are very evident at this university and can be easily recognized since academic excellence and the transmission of values are intertwined. We also need to strengthen our identity and affirm that the university does indeed have a Catholic character. This will have consequences for the branding of the university, for the Cody International Institute as an institution for social change, for the chaplaincy program, for the Board of Governors and its responsibility to ensure the Catholic character of the university, and ultimately for all of us who live out, uh, out of the motto of whatsoever things are true. Alumni and alumnae have expressed great pride in this university. Because of their formation here at St. Evex, they have become responsible members of and leaders within society. As we look toward the future, I believe that the Diocese of Antigonish and St. Francis Xavier University can explore questions that affect the church and the world today. The holistic education offered by St. Evex can provide essential support and encouragement to serve students today, even while they are here at St. Evex, in assisting them to grow and mature in their faith and be involved in their service of others. I believe that we are at a watershed moment in the expression of the Catholic heritage and character of this university. As we affirm these realities, we look to you, Dr. Kent, to be a leader in their development. I want to take this opportunity to offer congratulations to you as you assume this new role, and I pledge my support for you, and I look forward to working with you as you take on this new responsibility. The St. Francis Xavier University motto, everything that is true, is taken from the letter of Paul to the Philippians. The following is an ep excerpt from that epistle. I want you to be happy, always happy in the Lord. I repeat, what I want is your happiness. Let your tolerance be evident to everyone. The Lord is very near. There is no need to worry. 
But if there is anything you need, pray for it, asking God for it with prayer and thanksgiving and that peace of God, which is so much greater than we can understand, will guard your hearts and your thoughts in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, fill your minds with everything that is true, everything that is noble, everything that is good and pure, everything that we love and honor, and everything that can be thought virtuous or worthy of praise. Keep doing all the things that you learn from me and have been taught by me and have heard or seen that I do. Then the God of peace will be with you. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long.
a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. And Jesus called them to him and said to them, you know that those who are considered rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and their great ones exercise authority over them. But it shall not be so among you. But whoever will be great among you must be your servant. And whoever will be first among you must be slave of all. For even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. The academic vice president and provost, Dr. Leslie McLaren, will now introduce St. Evex's next president. Most Reverend Chancellor, I present to you Dr. Kent David MacDonald. In March 2014, after an extensive national search, the Board of Governors of St. Francis Xavier University announced the appointment of Dr. Kent MacDonald as the 18th President of St. Francis Xavier University, effective August 1, 2014. Dr. MacDonald was born in Halifax and raised in New Glasgow, Nova Scotia. He graduated from St. FX twice, first with a Bachelor of Science in Physical Education in 1986. Then in 1993, he graduated with a Master's in Education. He went on to earn an, a Master's in Business Administration from the University of Ottawa in 1996. He completed his doctorate at the University of Pennsylvania in 2012 where his research focused on higher education management. Dr. MacDonald comes to St. FX after serving with distinction as the seventh president of Algonquin College in Ottawa, Ontario. Prior to joining Algonquin, he held senior leadership positions in the private and the not profit sectors and was an educator in the elementary, secondary, and post-secondary systems in Canada and New Zealand. Dr. MacDonald is highly respected for the many achievements during his tenure at Algonquin, an institution with over 20,000 students and campuses in Ottawa, Perth, Pembroke, Saudi Arabia, and a newly constructed campus in Kuwait. Over 16 years, he held increasingly complex roles, including academic chair, Dean of the School of Business, Executive Director of Strategy and Business Development, Vice President Student Services and Development, then Vice President Academic before becoming President in 2012. This installation is an important and serious event, but as Kent said to me last week, it's not a funeral. Accordingly, it is at this point in this citation that I wanted to interject some humorless anecdotes about Kent. Surely someone who has spent so much time at St. FX as a student, as an alumnus, as a parent, and over the past two months, about 23 hours a day here, would have fallen into some kind of mishap we could have a chuckle about. And while I still believe there must be at least one, the observers have clearly been sworn to secrecy. <laughs> and I'm left with the impression that Dr. MacDonald is perfect. <laughs> I'm afraid the worst thing I can say about him is that he has an unusually high passion for readings on leadership in higher education. <clears throat> I'm quite OK with that, and I know the rest of you will be too. Kent is well known for his personal and engaging style of leadership, and in the short time he has been here, has had a positive and galvanizing effect on our work as educators and, supportive and supporters of students. 
He's become recognized already among those of us who work with him closely at St. FX as extraordinarily passionate about our university and what we can do to continually improve student access and the quality of education we deliver on this great campus. Most Reverend Chancellor, I invite you to install Dr. Kent McDonald as the 18th president of his alma mater, St. Francis Xavier University. Do you, Kent David McDonald, pledge yourself to perform the duties of the President and Vice Chancellor of St. Francis Xavier University as prescribed by law and by the statutes of the university? And do you promise to defend the rights and to, pro to promote the welfare of the university and members thereof? I will endeavor to do all of this with the help of God. By virtue of the authority vested in me, I duly install Dr. Kent David McDonald as President and Vice Chancellor of St. Francis Xavier University with all of the rights and re responsibilities pertaining to that high office. Professor Michael Stennitz, member of the Board of Governors, will invest you with the, role of, with the robe of office. Congratulations. Minister, the pounding of the desk sounds purely parliamentarian, but we'll, we'll, take, we'll take it. And now the, uh, the uh, formal changing of the guard, I call on Dr. Sean Riley, 17th President of St. of X University, who will pass to Dr. McDo uh, Dr. McDonald a symbol of the, of the transfer of authority, and that symbol is an excerpt from the St. of X University Act. Dr. Riley. You know, um, Mary Ellen and I have been married 28 years, and I know what was going through her moment at the time that Dr. Stein, it's one of our most senior faculty members, uh, allowed me to wear this robe. It was probably something like, oh, Kent, 
please don't put on that hat. But, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, Bishop Dunn, Dr. Riley, fellow St. of X governors, faculty and staff colleagues, St. of X students, Minister McKay, Father Andrew, priest from the diocese, sisters of St. Martha, and the Congregation of Notre Dame, Chief Prosper, distinguished al alumni, honored guests, of course my family and friends all, welcome and thank you for coming this afternoon. I would like to first acknowledge the musicians and performers who have done such a wonderful time uh, here this afternoon, most of whom are St. Evex students. You are a very talented lot. Thank you very much. And without her knowing, I also want to extend a very special thanks to Janet Stark and Michelle White. for planning and, and leading this uh, historic day for, for St. of X. Thank you. Um, this afternoon, this historic chapel is also filled with colleagues and friends, not only those from St. of X, but scholars from colleges and universities from across the country. To all of our out-of-town guests, I welcome you to our university chapel and to St. of X. I also know that there are people watching live stream here today. They include several American colleagues of mine who wish me well this week. Uh, I, wish, I thank them for uh, their warm wishes over the last several days and joining through the wonders of technology. Uh, finally, I also want to extend a very warm welcome to my old friends at Algonquin College uh, who have made the trip here from Ottawa. It's good to see you and thank you for coming. Before I get too far along, let me say in a, in a very public way how pleased I am to share the platform this afternoon with Dr. Riley. Uh, Sean, uh, it was an honor to receive the copy of the St. of X University Act from you, and I'll look forward to seeing you on this campus in the years ahead. Uh, equally, I look forward to celebrating your 40th uh, year reunion with you this weekend at homecoming and I would very much appreciate if everyone might join me in recognizing the impact of the 17th president of St. of X. Two additional people I might like, I'd like to recognize. Many of you have known that I've held my right hand up with a level of pride and proclaim that I wear my father's ring of 1955. Uh, my parents are here today. Um, it's good to have them. It's also, of course, uh, good to have Mary Ellen here. Uh, uh, we've had quite a journey since we uh, first met as children, uh, as kids, at, uh, on this campus 28 years ago. In fact, our first date was, I told many of you, attending a play that happened to be in the basement of this very chapel. Um, and the circle of life continues. Today, Mary Ellen is uh, here with our daughter Megan, a sophomore here at St. of X. And it's, I must say, it's with now some sense of amusement that I wonder if Megan would have taken that year off <laughs> before coming to St. of X, has she known that I would show up here after just <laughs> one year away from home? And our three boys, Adam, Matthew, and Patrick, they couldn't uh, be here uh, today or uh, they're spread across Canada. However, it's important for me to mention them because coming to Anakinish certainly has an impact on our family 
and our thoughts, of course, are with them. I look forward to, to connecting the entire McDonald clan next weekend uh, for Thanksgiving. And I have much to be thankful for. Uh, let me get, begin uh, my more formal uh, comments here this afternoon by saying it is really with a sense of humility, sense of wonder, and much delightful anticipation that I formally assume the president uh, position at an institution that I've really admired all my life. Uh, leading a university, as my colleagues could tell you, in 2014, it's not easy. And, uh, and so today, I'm asking for all of your help, for your support in the days ahead. I'm convinced that only by harnessing our collective ideas and experiences and passion for this university will we reach our fullest potential. And while I ask you for your help, the good news is that I know that I'm not alone. When I, I started my work here in August, I committed to meet with every department at St. Evex to understand better what's in their minds and in their hearts. At the time, I did not know there were 65 departments <laughs> at St. Evex. However, the first 15 have been absolutely wonderful. <laughs> and what, I, what I have learned early in my tenure is that in this intellectual community is filled with dedicated, caring, and deeply compassionate faculty and staff. They care deeply about the success of our students and the success of this university. And although I have not met all of them personally yet, I do recognize many of them sitting in front of me today in their beautiful academic gowns. And as our faculty could tell all of you that we wear these gowns only on special occasion today, and they are a reminder that hundreds of years ago, professors and students would wear them simply to keep warm in the cool classrooms of the day. And our regalia today is a ritual, and it reminds us of our academic history and reminds us that St. of X is connected to a larger worldwide community. And this notion of ritual is something that our sociologists and anthropologists could speak much better than I about, but rituals do bring us a meaning like this, us to connect in ways that words alone won't allow us. Catherine Bell was a Bernard Haley professor of religious studies at Santa Clara University. Professor Bell described rituals as the bridge between tradition and constant social change. St. of X University understands this notion of rituals very well and the importance of bridging tradition to as well as any university in North America today. Let me give you an example. The night before our first students, our first year students have their first class here at St. of X, we have a celebration. This year we had it and it filled the entire chapel to capacity. It was extremely magical evening. Our first year students wear university gowns and together they recite and they sign a pledge that we have called the Xavierian commitment. It's a commitment to themselves, their new classmates, and to St. of X's pursuit of excellence in academic, social, and for the students' or spiritual lives. And could it be possible that any university has any greater ritual than the one we celebrate on December 3rd, the celebration of the feast of St. Francis Xavier, better known around these parts as X-Ring Day? And as St. of X enters its 162nd year, this notion of ritual is very alive here this afternoon. Today we open a new chapter in the history of this venerable university, a new chapter that will provide that bridge between tradition of St. of X and some of the social changes that are at the heart of the challenges that are facing higher education today. This particular ritual affords me the opportunity to share my perspectives as the new president of St. of X. However, in planning, what I wanted to share is I am deeply sensitive to the fact that during these inauguration addresses, while they are by definition pronouncements 
by individuals who have not yet been there long enough to really know what they're talking about. <laughs> uh, nevertheless, it's not so much trying to provide you a list of what we must do as a university. In fact, it will be our faculty and our staff, our board, and, and the broader St. of X community that determines the priorities of the institution in a new strategic plan this upcoming winter. However, what I am prepared to do this afternoon is, is to share with you three general principles that will guide me, I believe, in my term as your president. These three president, uh, principles each have two objectives that I would like to share with you so that you will know what's on my mind during my term. And I hope that they will serve as a bridge to connect our rich and wonderful past and our traditions with some of the social changes that we as an academic community face today. My first principle that I, I want to share with you is the belief that we need to recommit and entrench our commitment to the academic purpose of St. of X. To frame this principle, I will offer some thoughts that I provided to our students just last month at our Xavierian welcome. In September, I introduced our students to this beautiful bronze statue over here to my left. The statue is of St. Francis Xavier. It was designed by Maria Gamundi Neiman, an artist born in Venezuela, educated in America, and living today, still living today in a small village at the foot of the Carrera Mountains in Tuscany. It was poured at a foundry in Italy in 1987 and brought here in, in 1988. I happen to believe in statues and, and public art, uh, spe specifically on the campus of a university. They add to the intellectual vibrancy of our university and they broaden our perspectives and remind us of people, issues, and times that have come before us. Francis Xavier had a deep impact on Miss Neiman in that the artist felt that she had never known a more intense individual than our patron. In reading the history of this particular statue, I found it interesting that she described Francis Xavier as stubbornly purposeful. It's this notion of being purposeful that guides this belief that we must gently nudge our university towards the academic purpose of St. of X. And to me, purposeful means having and setting clear goals. It means being resolute and determined in our pursuit of what is most important. It means focusing our scarce resources on what is most important to us. Perhaps most importantly, it simply means to have purpose. This morning, when the Board of Governors was meeting, I noticed in our parking lot just outside Keating Center was our bus, the St. of X bus, and on the side of it, it read St. of X, Canada's premier undergraduate experience. I smiled because I believe this to be true. However, what I also believe is that we as a group need to clarify this experience, to articulate what our promise is to our students, and determine how is it that all of our students will have the opportunity to live this promise. Certainly, we offer at this institution a wide range of learning opportunities and experiences, yet sometimes there are only small numbers of students who participate in the most popular academic and co-curricular activities. In my view, we need to ensure that it's not just the independent and the self-directed student who get to live our promise. Specifically, we need to come together and define the St. of X experience. During my time as president, we will accomplish two specific objectives, I hope, in regard to this first principle. First, we will collectively create a strategic plan that clearly states our mission, our priorities, our goals, and in each case, these will be driven by the belief that the St. of X experience must first be an exemplary academic learning experience for our students. 
The second objective is meant to strengthen the one specific area of our teaching, our research, and our service mission. I have been told that it is becoming more difficult for our faculty and for many small universities to access tri-council, CCI, CRC, and other types of research funding. Therefore, in my view, we must plan on providing more support for our faculty and to our student researchers. And in the coming year, we will address our current budget pressures with certainty. And thereafter, it's my commitment to build an additional $1 million into our annual budget. $1 million so that our faculty and our students can be better able to fulfill their important research agenda, including research in the support of their teaching. I'm convinced that a recommitment to the academic purpose for which St. of X has been built will ensure that St. of X remains one of Canada's preeminent universities. My second principle is related to my belief that universities are best positioned to make the world a better place. As I look at what's happening, as we look at what's happening around the world today, be it the unfolding health tragedy in West Africa, the ongoing geopolitical pressures and uncertainties in Ukraine and Syria and Iraq and places around the world, I think it's fair to say that the world has become more complex in these past years. And my belief, in fact, my experience tells me that the world today needs a little more Canada. The good news is I think that St. of X is uniquely positioned to extend our global reach and we must think, begin to think more deeply as a community, community about how we will better prepare our students for a flat and more connected world. In my view, we must make St. of X an even more international university, and I don't simply mean attracting international students. We must find ways for students and faculty and staff to better connect with the world, to have learning experiences outside of Canada, to share their expertise with those who need it most. In fact, this is part of a long-held tradition of a commitment to social justice here at this university. And here again, it's my intention, my hope, to accomplish two specific objectives. First, we will develop a Saint of X, a comprehensive Saint of X internationalization strategy. We will clarify and enhance our international capacity that will position Saint of X as an even more global enterprise. I imagine that if we're successful, we will have a more internationally focused curricula. We will have student life and students' experience that reflect a more global oriented campus. We will conduct more international research and we will establish more international experience for our students and our faculty and our staff so that they can extend their reach and bring their intellectual perspectives to the world. And the good news is we are the envy of every university in Canada. On this campus today, and I want to be clear about this, is that we have some of the world's great thought leaders when it comes to world issues, and they live right in our own Cody International Institute. We will better embrace the expertise that resides in Cody to help us develop and imp implement this internationalization plan. And the second outcome in extending this global impact is commit to commit during my term as your president to increase the number of international students to 10% of the total student population here at St. of X. This percent seems about right to me and we'll determine together what the actual number is. But by committing uh, to this number, it means that our campus will be home to over 500 international students that will enrich the learning for both domestic and those international students. By committing to creating more global impact, we move St. of X from a great national university to one that can make the world a better place. It's something I think that Moses Cody himself would be proud. And the third principle that will guide me as president is related to those 
probably most important, the people who come to St. of X, our students. The final principle is likely mostly, in my mind, most importantly because it's connected to our historical, our historical commitment to educate all. And in this regard, it's I who find inspiration in St. Francis Xavier. Francis Xavier was a Jesuit, and like Jesuits today, his interest was education, intellectual research, cultural pursuits, and social justice. And when you look carefully at the pictures of Francis Xavier, or statues like the one on my left, there's something that you'll notice in most of those, and that he's holding a school bell. It's meant to symbolize his devotion to the importance of education for all. So what does this mean to St. of X? First, I think that we can be proud that we are an international university. Our reputation has grown so strong over the past 17 years that now more than half of our students come to St. of X who are not from Nova Scotia. And yet, here's my fear. The cost of higher education begin, has, uh, continues to rise, and in my view, we have a duty to ensure that St. of X remains accessible to all highly motivated and talented students. Once again, I propose two objectives. First, we must make enrollment management a primary focus of how we operate as a university. And I've already started to do this, uh, as I've stated that enrollment is my most important priority this year. Building on this, I believe attracting and retaining students is the responsibility of all of us, not just faculty, but staff, alumni, and our friends of St. of X. I have told others that we must be manically focused on efforts to reach out and find the best students in this country. And further, we must measure our success not on how many students come to St. of X, but how many students graduate from St. of X. Therefore, it's my objective that by the end of my first term as your president, to see enrollment at St. of X grow to 5,000 students. I have met with our planners, Leon and his team, and I'm convinced that we have both the residential space and the classroom space in order to achieve this. My second and last objective is related to one specific barrier, perhaps the most important point I want to leave you here today, that stands in our way. That is the growing cost of attending an elite institution like St. of X. Faculty and staff have made it clear to me that we are not keeping up with some of our peer institutions in terms of scholarships and bursaries that we provide our students. Too many talented students are choosing another institution and therefore we need to address the St. of X's legacy of 161 years of opening its doors to the most talented students continues and is not judged by the size of their parents' bank account. Therefore, I have consulted with our advancement team, and today I'm announcing my commitment to create a new Xavierian Legacy Fund. This fund will provide much needed bursaries and scholarship to our students, a legacy fund that will help all talented students who want to come to St. of X be able to come to St. of X. Specifically, over the next five years, it's my personal objective to raise $25 million for student scholarships and bursaries so that the most talented students, regardless of background, can attend St. of X and attain their degree. With the help of alumni, <laughs> where was I? With the, <laughs> I think I was saying with the help of alumni, <laughs> our friends around the world, and our exceptional advancement team, I'm confident that we will not only achieve this goal, but surpass it. I believe these three principles of entrenching academic purpose, extending global reach, enhancing student access will be the bridge 
between the traditions of St. of X and the constant social changes that we face today. And so I've taken a lot of your time, so let me conclude. As president, I've, I'm often asked, what is it that keeps me up at night? Most presidents respond, it's about money. It's not for me, we will get our financial situ situation sorted out. For me, it's the never-ending question of are we doing the right things? I was reminded of this personal dilemma earlier this week when I had the honour to sit and listen carefully to two men who helped build the foundation upon which St. of X stands today. On Wednesday, I was joined by my colleague and cousin, Joe McDonald, for a short visit, a short visit with former St. of X presidents, Father Malcolm McDonnell, Father Greg McKinnon. Father Greg was president when I was here at St. of X as a student. And although the visit had to remain brief, its impact was immense. To listen carefully to these two learned men was a wonderful reminder to me about those who have come before us, like many retirees who are back here today. It was a humbling reminder for me and for all of us that these positions that we hold, we hold them just for fleeting moments. And then it, asked, it allowed me to ask myself, what might my legacy be? To me personally, it's written in your program uh, under my name, and it comes from Mark chapter 10, verse 45. It reminds us, for even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve. So as I walk through the uncertainty and the muddiness of, of are we doing the right thing, I'm guided by the belief that things will work out and we will be able to take advantage of these special positions that we hold, not to be served, but to serve. In my case, I am here, I've made this clear, and my office exists for the purpose of service to the faculty and the staff of this institution, to help them to do their important work, and to help create a learning environment, an academically focused experience for our students that is unmatched in the country. With your help, that's what I intend to do. Enjoy homecoming, hail and health. Thank you very much. Fantastic. Very well. When, when Kent mentioned his scholarship fund and the alumni, he neglected to say that the collection basket being passed. <laughs> uh, Kent, thank you very much for your thoughtful remarks and for giving us a glimpse of your bold priorities for the term ahead. I can safely say that the Board of Governors of this university, faculty, staff, students, the campus community, the community of the town, and the, and the county of Antigonish are solidly behind you in all you seek to do in your first mandate. So thank you very much. I, w I wasn't suggesting that your first mandate would be your only mandate. I was <laughs> just taking it one step. Uh, it's now my privilege to introduce the Honourable Peter McKay, Minister of Justice, Attorney General of Canada, and most importantly, in this chapel, a great friend and supporter of St. Francis Xavier University. Minister, if you would give some remarks, we'd be deeply engaged. Well, thank you, Mark, Dr. McDonald, 
Mary Ellen and Megan, the entire McDonald clan, which could easily fill this church several times over. Bishop Dunn and uh, Father Gillies and Reverend Clergy, members of the academic community, family and friends, municipal and provincial colleagues. Uh, I'm so thrilled to be here on such an auspicious day on this illustrious campus in this magnificent hall, and it truly is. It says so on the wall just over here. <laughs> and uh, ladies and gentlemen, friends and neighbors, um, Chief Prosper, Walali, I acknowledge that we are here on traditional Mi'kmaq land. And c'est un grand plaisir d'être ici pour une occasion magnifique. C'est spécial pour tout le monde. Kent, I'm glad we got to see you at least one time in that hat. <laughs> and this, uh, this truly is a turning point. Uh, in fact, an extremely important day for the future of St. Francis Xavier University. Listening to your remarks, you laid out a very bold vision, and, and a vision that uh, was clearly articulated in terms of the values, the principles, the priorities, and the purpose that you bring to your tenure here. You've always exhibited throughout your professional career, as was articulated, a certain fortitude, a certain perseverance, and purpose purpose that you share with the namesake of this university in terms of bringing about important change. And with the installation of Dr. Kent MacDonald as the new president of this storied institution, you are welcoming not only a charismatic and capable man with a wealth of experience in academia, business, not-for-profit, work here in Canada and abroad, but you're welcoming an individual who truly embodies the very values that are taught here, that have successfully made this small but tight-knit St. Francis Xavier University campus the mightily respected university and institution that it is today. His enormous success, most recently at Algonquin, saw him establish an international following through his outreach to places as far afield as New Zealand, Australia, Saudi Arabia, most recently Kuwait. His very first day on the job this summer, he attended the welcoming ceremonies at Cody Institute with Dr. Gaventa and the incoming class of students. This to me exhibited and exuded his international view, which was very present in his remarks here already. Among his numerous characteristics that have been mentioned, I would like to think that some of that perseverance and tremendous drive was also forged on the rugby field here at St. Evex. And I have full confidence that under Dr. McDonald's leadership, St. Evex University will continue to reach new heights in academic achievement, transformation, and realization for the dreams and ambitions of the students. He has laid out a very firm commitment to ensuring that those ambitions become professional realities, paving the way for the future generation of leaders in their chosen fields, for which St. Evex is already so well known. Being the 18th president of a university such as this, you have big robes to fill. The much admired Dr. Sean Riley will surely be missed, though I understand we have the good fortune to have him remain here on the campus for some time to come. And so it is indeed a historic day of transformation and a signal of the next wonderful chapter of St. Evex's future and prosperity. I offer the entire university community and those visiting us my congratulations for your good work and leadership in our country. My best wishes for continued success here on the campus at St. Evex. I have no doubt that we will continue to enjoy a successful and productive and financially helpful partnership, uh, Dr. McDonald, between the university and all levels of government. 
and I look forward to strengthening those bonds as the university embarks on this important new voyage of growth. And most of all, Dr. McDonald, to you and your family, welcome back to Antigonish. Welcome back to St. Evex. Welcome home. Merci. Minister, thank you for your kind and thoughtful remarks, and most importantly, for everything you do for St. Evax and for the Cody Institute. Thank you very much. Uh, St. Evax's own uh, Randy Delori, Deloria, uh, Minister of the Environment and Minister of Gaelic Affairs, was slated to, uh, to be here today and uh, provide uh, greetings on behalf of the Premier in the province of Nova Scotia. Unfortunately, the House is sitting, and uh, Minister Delory was called into government business. But he has sent uh, he has sent his uh, best wishes and greetings on behalf of the Premier and the province. Uh, on behalf of the Diocese of Antigonish, uh, Reverend John Barry, Chair of the Council of Priests, will provide his greetings. Your Excellency Bishop Dunn, outgoing President Dr. Riley, distinguished guests, faculty, staff, and students, and in particular Dr. Kent MacDonald. I am honored and pleased to have the opportunity on behalf of the Bishop of uh, the Diocese of Anikinish, Bishop Dunn, to extend greetings to you, Dr. MacDonald, as you take up your duties as the 18th President of St. Francis Xavier University. You bring to this position an outstanding record of academic achievement that bodes well for the future of this venerable institution so dear to all of us. You are a native son of this region and a graduate of St. of X, as we know so well. This ceremony is something of a homecoming, as Minister McKay has said, and we heartily join in saying welcome home. While the relationship between the Diocese of Antikonish and the University has changed across the years, I think all of us would agree that it should continue to be strong and mutually beneficial. First, because the founders of this university were convinced of the intimate connection between faith and knowledge, between sound religious belief and the pursuit of excellence in various academic disciplines. Second, because the very site of the university is shared with the cathedral church of this diocese. And third, because the patron of this institution, the Jesuit St. Francis Xavier, who, like the Jesuit on the chair of Peter, Pope Francis, desired to bring the gospel to the furthest corners of the world. In the process, he discovered that other peoples had rich, noble cultures and traditions, far from replacing or extinguishing them, the encounters between Jesuit missionaries and those to whom they ministered were mutually enriching, and surely academic research and investigation must have that same breadth, that same all-embracing universality that moved Francis Xavier to leave the comforts and security and even the complacence of, of his own world and culture to reach out to those in another part of the globe. St. Thomas Aquinas maintained that the ascent of faith, in it, there is a mixture of rest and unrest, which means that the believer should always be engaged in a searching investigation and probing consideration of all things. St. Thomas held that with the ascent of belief comes a new sort of unrest. He taught that the cognition of belief does not quiet the craving, but rather kindles it. The academic pursuit has these elements of rest and unrest, of believing and wondering, of affirming while always exploring to weigh and consider all things. When all of this is taken into consideration, 
there will always be a strong, and I hope, positive relationship between St. Francis Avery University and the Church of Antikonish. To you, Dr. Riley, thank you for your years of service. To you, Dr. McDonald, thank you for accepting this position and be assured of the support and encouragement of the Diocese of Antikonish, its bishop, clergy, religious, and lay faithful. I now call on the Mayor of Antigonish, His Worship, Carl Chisholm. Bishop Dunn, Minister McKay, Chief Prosper, Ward Boucher, faculty, ladies and gentlemen, students. Um, I have three things I want to say. Uh, Janet asked me to keep it at 10 minutes, so I'll do my best. Just kidding, Janet. First of all, I want to thank Kent for applying to become the 18th president of St. Francis Xavier University, or this wouldn't have been possible, so thank you very much for doing that, Kent. Number two, I want to tell you I was told very early that they will not be a resident of the town of Antigonish. We were at the President's Gala Award in the spring, and his good wife, I had the opportunity to sit with them at the table, and his good wife told me, Carl, I'm sorry, but we will be in the county where we can view the water. So somewhere you're going to have water in your, in your. And uh, thirdly, I'm looking forward to working with Kent, along with uh, Brendan and Alicia. We're going to be reestablishing the town and gown, and we have our first meeting planned for Monday here on campus. Looking very much forward to that. So on behalf of uh, the residents of the town of Antigonish and town council, Kent, I want to welcome you back as well to Antigonish, and we are looking forward to working very much with you to move this town and county forward. Thank you very much. To Kent's Algonquin colleagues, I'll just point out that he did not apply for this position. We knew where he lived. We went after him, <laughs> and we sold hard, and we got him. Uh, it's my pleasure to now call on the warden of the, the municipality of the county of Antigonish, uh, Mr. Russell Boucher. Well, first of all, I'd like to say that uh, the town's loss is our gain. <laughs> uh, with all due respect, I'm not going to acknowledge each individual distinguished guest because Janet only allowed me one minute. I don't know where Carl got ten. <laughs> so I'll ju just go with good afternoon, everyone. I am honored to be with you this afternoon to welcome Dr. Kent McDonald home. It is great to see an alumnus with such deep roots in our region return home to assume a strong leadership role in our community. Dr. McDonald, we welcome you at this important time and recognize your role in defining future possibilities for the university and for collaboration with the community of Antigonish. Our leadership team at the municipality of the county of Antigonish looks forward to continuing and strengthening partnerships between the community and your team. Together, we can build on the lessons and accomplishments of the past and strive for growth and sustainability. On behalf of Council, I offer congratulations on your appointment as the University's 18th President and Vice Chancellor and welcome you and your family uh, to Andy Ganesh. Congratulations. I now call on Mr. Paul Davison, as, uh, President and CEO of the Association of Universities and Colleges of Canada. Your Grace, Most Reverend Chancellor, Honourable Chief, Honourable Minister, 
What a magnificent afternoon to be here in Anjiganesh. I am, it's such a day of inspiration, of hope and promise. And I am delighted to bring greetings from the 97 universities and degree granting colleges who share your passion for learning, discovery and community service. I also want to congratulate Dr. McDonald and the university itself for choosing a person of such accomplishment and distinction and with deep roots in the community. This is an auspicious day for this university. And while it's called an installation, I want to return to the question of promise because on behalf of the 97 universities who share your passion for discovery, learning and knowledge, I join every student, faculty, staff member, alumni, and friend of this university to support you in your exercising your gifts of leadership today and throughout your term. Congratulations. From the Association of Catholic Colleges and Universities of Canada, Dr. Jason West. Dr. McDonald, Your Excellency, uh, Bishop Dunn, and honored guests all, uh, I'm very pleased and, and happy to be here today to bring greetings and congratulations on behalf of the Association of Catholic Colleges and Universities of Canada and uh, its president, Dr. Terry Downey. Um, any uh, one taking on the role of president of a university uh, is aware, of course, they're taking on a large responsibility. And this is even more the case uh, in an institution with the rich uh, history of contributions to the academy, the local community, and the church that St. Francis Xavier uh, has. Um, I'd like to assure you, uh, Dr. McDonald, that as you take up this role, uh, you will be supported with the uh, encouragement and uh, uh, community of your colleagues in the association, uh, as well as our uh, prayers as you look forward to uh, meeting the challenges ahead and the goals that you've set out today. So I'd like to thank you very much and congratulate you. Dr. Yvonne Grenier, Chair of the St. Evax University Faculty. Uh, <clears throat> good afternoon. I will be brief. Um, Dr. McDonald and distinguished guests and members, of, uh, members and friends of the St. Evax uh, Faculty. Um, it's a pleasure. Indeed, it's an honor for me to be here today um, representing university faculty to congratulate Dr. McDonald to welcome the, uh, the McDonald family uh, in our community, in our campus, in our community. Um, I wish I had thought of it. I, want, I should have brought like a frame copy of the faculty manual of procedure. <laughs> uh, but maybe, maybe I'll do that next time. Um, all I can say is that uh, Dr. McDonald has been here for only a couple of months, but there's a great sense of purpose. I think there's a great deal of energy on campus, and uh, for a university to be successful, of course, everybody have, has to contribute, and of course, uh, he said that himself. So I think I can say on behalf of faculty that we all look forward to work with him and other members of admin to make sure that this uh, great tradition of excellence and solidarity continues for, for years to come. Thank you very much. Vice President of the St. Evax Student Union, Alicia Siliker. Good afternoon. I am honored to be standing here today at the installation of our 18th President, Dr. Kent McDonald. This job carries much responsibility, but it is also filled with great satisfaction. For example, you will know that each year, roughly 4,000 St. Evex students walk through this campus with pride, and that 1,000 will finish their degrees knowing that they are treasured members of an amazing family. 
While working with Dr. McDonald this summer, I have had great experiences, including him welcoming us into his home for dinner one evening. We talked about the work that we do as a student's union and how he can better connect with students. And it sounds like the Zaverian Legacy Fund will be a fantastic start to that. On behalf of the students of St. Evex, we welcome you, Dr. McDonald, back home. And we cannot wait to see what new paths our beloved university will follow under your leadership. Thank you for joining us in this exciting journey, and congratulations, Dr. McDonald. On behalf of the St. of X staff, Jane McDonald. I bring warm greetings to you, Kent, as our 18th president. Your presence with us, or, excuse me, your presence with us since August has already made such a positive impact on all employees. We look forward to learning from you and with you as we provide outstanding services to our students. As an engaged group of enthusiastic employees, we, the staff, look forward to how we will support you as, in your words, we collectively shape the future of St. of X in a way that represents our rich history and our public purpose. Your leadership and guidance will support all that we do and our daily contributions as we serve the needs of our students. Welcome. Uh, President of the St. of X Alumni Association and a busy guy this weekend, Dr. Andrew Howlett. President McDonald, it is my absolute pleasure and joy to stand here on behalf of our network of over 40,000 alumni, as well as our friends and supporters of St. of X to congratulate you on your journey of success and especially on your new role as the 18th president of St. of X. As alumni, we are inspired by your story and what is possible with the foundation of a St. of X education and a St. of X experience. As alumni, we hear you and acknowledge your priorities and share in your priorities. And while I accidentally left my checkbook at home, <laughs> Today at the annual general meeting of the Alumni Association, it was announced that a recent gift of the association to the university of $50,000 to establish the Alumni Association Scholarship. From this day forward, you lead not only the operations of this institution, but your leadership will also influence the hearts and minds of alumni. Your passion invite us to return to serve, not to be served. And your integrity and journey inspire us to imagine and fulfill our own individual dreams. Once again, congratulations and welcome home. I now have the honor to present uh, the heads and representatives of other universities and colleges uh, present today in order of their date of founding. And there is a uh, process happening over here that I'm not sure of uh, what's next. So I'm, I, what I'm going to do is I'll call out the names. And Janet, uh, do, do people join me on stage? Is that the one at a time? OK, there we go. We should have talked, obviously, beforehand. Uh, so, uh, and I noticed some of them are doing double duty as emissaries from, uh, from Alma Matters and St. of X uh, uh, representatives and professors. But in order of the founding of the, uh, the dates of founding of the universities, representing St. Mary's University, Dr. Dr. Margaret McDonald, Dean of Arts. McGill University, Dr. William Ritchie, alumnus. <laughs> University of Toronto, Dr. Bruce Russell, alumnus.
Acadia University, Dr. Darcy Benoit, Director, School of Computer Science. Mount Allison University, Dr. Wendy McCall, alumna. <laughs> Queen's University, Dr. Mary McGilvery, alumna. <laughs> St. Paul University, Dr. William Sweet, alumnus. Huron University, Dr. John Blackwell, alumnus. <laughs> Mount St. Vincent University, Dr. Ramona Lumpkin, President and Vice Chancellor. <laughs> University of Manitoba, Dr. Leslie Ruggles, alumna. University of Western Ontario, Dr. Charlene Weaving, alumna. <laughs> McMaster University, Dr. Ken Penner, alumnus. <laughs> Carleton University, Dr. James Bickerton, alumnus. University of Waterloo, Dr. Noreen Verberg, alumna. <laughs> Université de Moncton, Ms. Marie Brunel, alumna. <laughs> Algonquin College, someone still bearing a grudge, Ms. Cheryl Jensen, President and CEO. I Of course she's not bearing a grudge. She too has uh, large robes and shoes to fill and we truly wish you all the best, uh, Cheryl, on, your, on what you're accomplishing at Algonquin. <laughs> Newman Theological College, Dr. Jason West, President. <laughs> Cape Breton University, Dr. Dale Keefe, Vice President Academic and Research. Concordia University, Mr. Andrew Beckett, alumnus. <laughs> Nova Scotia Community College, Ms. Monica Foster, Vice President, Administrative Services. The following universities and colleges are unable to be present but have sent greetings and best wishes to Dr. McDonald, and I will list them. Brandon University, uh, Brescia University College, Campion College, Dalhousie University, École Nationale d'Administration Publique, Emily Carr University of Art and Design, Institut National de la Recherche Scientifique, Kappa Gamma Pi, National Catholic College Graduate Honor Society, McEwen University, Memorial University, Mount Royal University, Ontario College of Art and Design, Redeemer University College, Royal Rhodes University, Ryerson University, St. Jerome's University, St. Thomas More College, University de Saint Boniface, University of British Columbia, University of King's College, University of New Brunswick, University of Northern British Columbia, University of Regina, Vancouver Island University, University of Victoria, and York University. Sure. 
Thank you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we're on the home stretch. You're invited to attend the reception immediately following in Dennis Hall, just located across the road in the Cody International Institute. The audience is asked to remain in your places until the academic procession has left the chapel. Some students will leave now to form the honor guard. So students, whoever you are, please leave. <laughs> didn't sort of come out the way I'd intended. <laughs> uh, after, the, uh, after the benediction without cue, uh, Andreas Hurt will sing O Canada in English, French, Scottish Gaelic, and Mi'kmaq. How's that for impressive? I won't be joining in. Uh, please stand now for the benediction. Chancellor. Almighty God, Father of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, reveal to us so powerfully in your Son, Jesus Christ. We thank you for showering your blessings upon this university. Bless us here, present, who work hard for your justice and for a greater care for the poor and suffering. Help us to see that our university's greatness is a found above all in the respect we show for the weakest and those most in need among us. We praise and thank you for those entrusted with the leadership of this university, God of wisdom, justice, and might. We thank your guidance. We ask your guidance for Dr. Kent McDonald and all his collaborators who seek to serve the common good of this university. Send your spirit upon all of us as we may persevere and convey whatsoever things are true. May your truth guide us as we care for all creation and seek the reconciliation of all people in the midst of ever-growing diversity. We ask this blessing through Jesus Christ, who is the way, the truth, and the life forever and ever.
Melki 